a joint work with Matthias Flaar um, about um, special values of uh, zeta functions. So let me, sorry, there is an issue here. Okay, let me fix some notations first. So X will, in this talk, always denote an arithmetic scheme, uh, by which I mean a scheme which is separated and a finite type over the integers. And as was mentioned by Christopher Denninger, uh, to such a scheme, you can associate um, um, a zeta function, uh, which is defined like, like this. So it's a, it's a product over the set of closed points, uh, which is denoted by X naught here. And for each closed point, uh, you consider this quantity here, which is one over one minus the norm of X to the minus S, where the norm of X is by definition, the cardinality of the residue field, uh, which is a finite field. And it can be seen that this product converges uh, in this complex half plane, uh, given by the set of complex numbers uh, with real part uh, strictly greater than the whole dimension of the scheme X. So here it gives uh, a holomorphic function in this complex half plane. And it is expected for a very long time now uh, that this uh, holomorphic function has a meromorphic continuation in the entire complex plane. And moreover, uh, it is supposed to satisfy a functional equation at least if X is regular and proper over the integers. I'll come back to the functional equation later. And now for any, for any uh, integer, positive or negative integer N, we denote by zeta star of XN, uh, that's a real number, a non-zero real number, uh, which is defined as the leading coefficient in the Taylor development of the zeta function at S equal N. And this is what is called uh, the special value or the, yeah, the zeta value. And the goal is to give a cohomological description of this number for any integer n. And of course, that this is pretty ambitious. So at least try to see what should happen. And to make life easier, we will restrict to x proper and regular although we believe that the same description should work uh, in general. So in order to give such a cohomological description, we define two perfect complexes of Fabian groups. The first is denoted like this. So it's R gamma WC of X with coefficient in Z of N. It is called very little multiple cohomology with compact support and it is of multiplicative flavor. So for example, if N is one, then this complex here is closely related to the multiplicative group as a shift. It's a, it's a, it's a shift, shift of the multiplicative group. And the second complex um, <clears throat> is given by the derived RAM cohomology, which was defined by Illusis uh, in the seventies already. So this is this complex, that's a complex of sheaves on the scheme X for the Zariski topology. And then we, you can consider the Zariski hyper cohomology of this complex. And this is what is uh, uh, derived the RAM cohomology. And it, it looks like something additive. So in the same example, N equals one, uh, this complex of sheaves here is just uh, the structure shift um, with the addition. So it's just the additive group. Okay, uh, so we have two perfect complexes of abelian groups. And in that case, you can consider their determinants uh, relative to Z. So here, this is the determinant of the Veletal complex with compact support. And this is just a, a lattice of rank one. So just a, a Z module free of rank one. And same thing for the additive complex. So you take the tensor product of those two lattices, you get something that is uh, just a Z module free of rank one, but it has the magical property that if you tensor it with the real numbers R, uh, you get something that is canonically isomorphic to R via this map here, lambda XN. 
Um, and so this defines a real number up to sign because you can just uh, look at, take one here in the, the, the source R and you look at its image in, in here and you can compare it with the generator of this lattice. And um, since you have a choice for the generator, you have two choices, it gives you a real number up to sign. Uh, there is a question in the chart. I'm sorry? Uh, there is a question in the chart. Do you want to answer the question? I don't see it. What's the question? The question okay. about- so, okay. uh, what's, what's a perfect complex? So he, it's yeah. a perfect complex, I get, I guess, right? So here, this is just a complex of abelian groups such that uh, all, almost all the cohomology groups are zeros and all the cohomology groups are finitely generated abelian groups. Okay. All right, so the question we ask uh, is the following. All right. Uh, do we have this? So uh, you may take the zeta value here in R, or more precisely it's inverse. It generates a lattice in R, and you wonder if this lattice corresponds to this one here, which is called the fundamental line here. Okay, so in other words, you ask if the determinant of this trivialization here is equal up to sign to the zeta value. So this number on the left, I will call it uh, the determinant of the fundamental line. So we ask if the determinant of the fundamental line is equal up to sign to the zeta value. So for now, this is just a question. Uh, and let's look at an example, namely spec OF, where F is a number field. So this is a finite extension of the rationals. And N is one. So this is already um, an interesting example. So I just give the, so here we have the Velital cohomology group. So remember we had a perfect complex, which I call the Velital complex with compact support. We just look at its cohomology groups and I just give you the answer. Uh, in degree lower or equal than zero, we get nothing. In degree three, we get Z canonically and we get nothing in degree greater, strictly greater than three. So from there, you can already see that spec OF from this uh, cohomological perspective is something of dimension three. And now it remains to understand the groups H1 and H2, and they are given by the following exact sequence. So you have here, here this group, which is a, a product of two i pi z indexed over the set of, uh, R2, which is the set of complex primes of the number field. So this group injects into the H1 with compact support, and the co-kernel injects into the group of global units, which is a finitely generated abelian group. Here you have the sign map, uh, so it is, which, is, which goes to Z mod 2 to the R1, where R1 is the set of real places of the number field. And the sign map is defined the obvious way. Uh, so more explicitly, you take, you take global unit, you take a real embedding, so you get a real number, uh, a non-zero real number, and you just look at the sign. It gives you an element of Z mod two. And then you have the H2, which surjects onto the picker group of the number ring, so which is just the, the class group of the number field. <clears throat> so this gives a description of the relevant uh, Veilital cohomology groups in that case. Now we have the additive complex. As I already mentioned, it's very simple in that case. Uh, you just get OF in degree zero. So just the additive group. All right, and then you can compute. Uh, it's an exercise to compute the, the determinant of the fundamental line in that case, which is just made of all those groups I just mentioned. <laughs> And you get this, you get two to the R1. Remember that R1 is the number of uh, real places, two pi to the R2, where R2 is the number of complex places. RF is the classical regulator of the number field. So the first two to the R1 comes from this group here. Two pi to the R2 comes from the first group here. Uh, the regulator 
comes from the group, the group of global units. Sorry, there is a question. Uh, yes, this uh, vinyl tall commodity. I thought yes. you said it very quickly. I'm sorry, I don't, I, I don't hear you well. Could you speak louder, please? How do you define this vinyl tall commodity? So they are defined uh, using artin duality. But I'm not, yeah, I don't want to give too much details on veil cohomology. The talk is on uh, more explicitly on the additive term. But it is defined in terms of uh, by some homological algebra techniques uh, using um, artin verdier duality with integral coefficients. Okay. So is it, do you use uh, some kind of a Durham complex or something? Or? The Durham complex, no. You use some motivic complex, motivic complexes. So I was saying that the, the regulator comes from the group of global units. Uh, HF is the class number. It is the cardinality of the Pika group, which is a finite group. And WF is the group of roots of, I mean, is the number of roots of unities. It's the cardinal, cardinality of the torsion subgroup of OF star. And then you have the square root of the absolute value of the discriminant, which comes from the, the additive group here somehow. And in that case, we do get uh, the special value of the Dedekind zeta function at s equal one uh, using the analytic class number formula, the classical analytic class number formula. So in that case, we get what we want. And let's see if we are still lucky uh, in that case. So the same example, sorry, I cannot see here, uh, spec OF, uh, but n now uh, is larger. Uh, here we compute this. So I don't give you the cohomology groups, but that's what we get. So the, the blue number here uh, has this power of two, this power of two i pi, hn, which is a generalization of the, the class number, which is defined in terms of uh, motivic cohomology, but classical motivic cohomology. Rn, which is the the Bellinson regulator, also defined in terms of motivic homology. And WN is also defined in terms of motivic homology. It generalizes uh, the number of roots of unities. So that's for the, the blue number. And the blue number essentially comes from the veil -Lital complex with compact support. You also have this red number, which you can see looks like something more additive. Here you have this power of the absolute value of the discriminant. And here you have the square root of the discriminant together with its sign, actually. And this red number comes from the additive complex. So the, the derived Durham complex uh, of spec OF relatively to, to Z. Okay, so now we have this uh, proposition. Uh, if F is an abelian number field, so it's an abelian extension of the field of the rational numbers, you look at spec OF, and you look at uh, s equal n greater or equal than two or one. And then the special value is given by this number. So you can see that the blue number is exactly this one, the one that is given by the Veletal complex. The red number is also there, given by the derived Durham complex. But there is this factor here missing, factorial n minus one, uh, to the minus the degree of the number field. So this number is not anywhere in the two complexes I, that I just mentioned. Yeah, so the, this factor is missing and that's, uh, that's annoying. That's an issue. Uh, so more, more generally, what we expect is this, is that the determinant of the fundamental line, which is this number, right? So this guy is defined by the determinant of the Veletal complex tensor, the determinant of the derived Ram complex, together with the canonical trivialization when you tensor it with R, it gives you a real number up to sign. So we don't expect that it gives the special value on the nose, but only up to this factor, C infinity of Xn, which has this explicit form. It's this big, uh, somewhat complicated product indexed over i and j uh, of factorials. See, n minus one minus i factorial, 
And here you have the Hodge numbers appearing. And we would like this term to be in one of the two complexes I mentioned, either the very little cohomology with compact support or the additive one, namely uh, derived the RAM cohomology. So the idea, I mean, one idea was to uh, the following, in order to obtain a correction factor free description of the special value, maybe we can try to replace the base ring Z by the sphere spectrum in the definition of the derived RAM complex. So in order to do that, uh, I will first explain briefly how derived RAM cohomology is defined. So here we denote by poly over Z, the category of finitely generated polynomial Z algebras. And D of Z, the derived category of Fabian groups. So here it's a derived infinity category. And we look at this functor. So to any finitely generated polynomial algebra, you can consider the classical Durham, algebraic Durham complex, where you just truncate uh, brutally uh, by the, hedge, the end step of the, of the Hodge filtration. You just stop at uh, the degree n minus one. You get a perfectly well-defined functor. And the point here is that any, any ring can be written as some kind of co-limit of such uh, polynomial, finitely generated polynomial Z algebra. So you can use this to extend this functor uh, by co-limits. And this process is called uh, left scan extension. So by left scan extension, this defines the derived RAM complex modulo the n step of the Hodge filtration. This is what means this uh, strictly lower than n for any commutative ring A. And in fact, for any simple shell commutative ring, but we don't use that here. And so if you want to compute this concretely, what you do and what was already done by Illusi in the seventies is that you take a simple shell resolution of the ring A by uh, polynomial Z algebra. So here the polynomial Z algebra are not finitely generated, but it doesn't matter. And then you apply this functor here level wise. So you get a simply shell complex just by functoriality. And then you can, with this simply shell complex, you can transform it in double complex and you can consider the total complex associated to this double comp complex. And this is, uh, this computes the derived RAM complex. Okay, so this is the first definition of the derived RAM complex. And of course, if you have a scheme, then you can glue this uh, on any affine piece. Uh, you have such a complex and you can glue this uh, locally. So in other words, you define the very little, com sorry, the, the derived RAM complex on any scheme by Zariski descent. All right, but so this definition uh, is not good enough to be I mean, to, to suggest uh, a different definition where we could replace Z by the sphere spectrum. So let me give another definition, which is uh, done using uh, Ortiel homology. So here we do not buy T, the topological circle. And so for any commutative ring, we can consider this functor. Uh, this constant factor CA from T to uh, this category of commutative algebra object in D of Z. So here, to make this precise, you have to consider D of Z as a symmetric monoidal infinity category. And in such situation, you can consider defined commutative algebra objects, which are just objects in D of Z together with a multiplication, which is uh, associative and commutative up to um, some coherent system of homotopies. It's a bit technical, but it is doable using all this work in this infinity categorical business. So you consider this constant functor with constant value A, and then you consider the co-limit, co-limit of this functor, and this is by definition Hochschild homology. All right, and 
since T acts on itself, I mean, it's a group, right? So it acts on itself by, by translation and therefore it acts on the co-limit. So we get an action of the circle on Hotchill homology. And cyclic homology is defined as the homotopy co-invariance of this action. Yeah. So, yeah. And then, so you get a complex here. I mean, an object of the derived category of Z. And you can consider the double suspension, which means that you shift the complex by two. And that's the complex we are interested in because of this result, which is due to Antio. So if the cotangent complex has tau amplitude in minus one zero, which is a reasonable uh, assumption, then um, there is a complete exhaustive filtration on this complex, uh, sigma two HC of A, which looks like this. So it's a sequence of maps of complexes where the, 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 this one F zero is equal or at least equivalent to the full complex uh, we started with. And then you have sequence of maps like this, a map from Fn plus one to Fn and so on. Um, so saying that the filtration is exhaustive means that here you have an equivalence or yeah, here an equality. And saying that it is complete means that if you take the homotopy limit of this sequence, you get something equivalent to zero. And now we can, uh, you can consider the co-fiber of this map here, which means uh, intuitively the co-kernel. And Antio tells us that uh, this co-kernel gives uh, the derived Durham complex modulo the Hodge filtration. So Gre n is by definition, de de sorry, Gre n is by definition the co-fiber of this map. And it is canonically equivalent to the derived Durham complex modulo the n step of the Hodge filtration shifted by two n. And this can be seen as a new definition of derived Durham cohomology, right? You just define the derived Durham complex as this graded piece shifted by minus two n. Okay, so now we can try to <clears throat> to imitate this definition where we replace the base ring Z by the sphere spectrum. That's the entire idea of uh, topological Hodge homology. So let's do that. We replace the initial commutative ring Z by the initial ring of higher algebra, which is the sphere spectrum. Okay, so we have the, sorry, it's a bit technical, the infinity category of spectra, which I denote by SP here. This can also be seen as the derived category of the sphere spectrum seen as a ring. And this is a symmetric monoidal infinity category, just like Z, D of Z. And so you can, you can consider commutative algebra object in that symmetric monoidal infinity category. And this is by definition, uh, what is called a E infinity ring. And the point is that any usual commutative ring can be seen as this fancy ring, E infinity ring, as a discrete E infinity ring actually. So now let A be a commutative ring we do the same thing, namely we consider the constant functor TA from T, the circle, to the category, the infinity category of E infinity ring with constant value A. And we consider the co-limit. And this is by definition, uh, topological Hochschild homology of A, THH of A. So now, for the same reason as before, T acts on, its, on itself by translation, so it acts on the co-limit. And you consider the homotopy co-invariance as was done for usual Hochschild homology. And so I denote it by TC plus of A because it's not what is called topological cyclic homology. Uh, it's a bit different. It's related, but a bit different. It, it, so it is defined as the 
as the co-invariance for the circle action uh, on THH of A. And as before, you consider the double su suspension of this spectrum. Excuse me. Sorry. Um, yeah. And now we have the, this, the following theorem. So the same assumption, so namely uh, the cotangent complex has store amplitude in minus one zero. Then now we have by complete, by exhaustive, by filtration. So I mentioned briefly what was a, a filtration in this context. It was a, a functor from n up, where n up is seen as a category where you have a map from n plus one to n to some category DZ, for example. And now the B filtration in our context is a, a functor from this category here to, in that case, the category of spectra. So this B filtration, and you can also have, you also have the no, no, notion of completeness and exhaustiveness in that context. So this B filtration is denoted by Z star F star of this spectrum here, uh, sigma two TC plus of A, such that we have the following properties. So first of all, you can forget about the, the filtration Z and you look at only the filtration F and you look at the graded piece for this filtration. Okay, so concretely it is defined like this. Just take the Z of zero of Gre and F. And this guy is a complex of abelian groups or more precisely, it's an object of D of Z. And that's not for free. Um, a priori, it is just a spectrum. But here uh, it's actually a Z module. Okay. and. And now the, the filtration Z will give a filtration on this complex here. And we want to know what are the graded pieces. And the result is this one. So uh, the graded piece, uh, the, the G, J graded piece of this filtration Z on this complex here, Gre and F, is given by this. If J is zero, then you get as previously just the derived RAM complex modulo the Hodge filtration uh, at the step n shifted by two n. And if J is greater or equal than one, you get this guy here. It's the derived RAM complex uh, truncated at n minus J. And you have to take the derived tensor product with Z mod J. And you shift by two n minus one this, this time. So it gives a description of the graded pieces for this uh, bi-complete, bi-exhaustive B filtration. And uh, yeah, maybe I should mention that, uh, so this theorem uses uh, work of other people, uh, not in particular, Batmore, Scholz, Antio, and uh, an old com computation by Bockstedt uh, of THH of Z. So a corollary of this result is that this by complete by exhaustive B filtration is left can extended from finitely generated polynomial Z algebra by the same process I mentioned before. Um, and, and therefore you can use this to, to extend this definition to, for any commutative ring. And you just generalize the definition that you have here in this by this result. You don't get something different. Okay, so, so we define this, this guy, which is just a notation. Uh, it could be somewhat inaccurate, but it's, I find it quite intuitive. Uh, so it's a, I see that as the derived Durham complex modulo the Hodge filtration relative to the sphere spectrum. It is defined as this graded piece, Gre N of this guy here, this spectrum shifted by two N. And remember, this is just, uh, a complex of abelian groups. And then for any scheme, you just do the same thing as before. You define this weird uh, derived RAM complex by Zariski descent. And so we have the following corollary. Uh, we consider a scheme that is regular and proper over spec Z. So remember that for zeta values, this is the case we are interested in. 
So there is a, a fiber sequence of perfect complexities of abelian groups. So here you can just see that as a, an exact triangle or distinguished triangle. So in the middle, you have the complex we want to understand. Uh, on the right, it's the usual uh, derived Ram complex. And on the left here, so the fiber of this map is this guy, uh, given by the hypercomology of Z01 of this complex here. Um, so we want to understand this complex. And the result is that this complex has finite cohomology groups and finitely many because it's a perfect complex. And so you can define its multiplicative Euler characteristic, right? Just take the alternate product of the cardinality of all these finite groups. And this is exactly C infinity of Xn, um, the correction factor that I already mentioned. Right, so this is this weird product of factorials here, where uh, you have this, which is indexed by i and j, and you see the Hodge numbers appearing here. So this is good. Um, so now we can state um, a reasonable special value conjecture. So there is, um, so this is there is this new fundamental line here. So this guy here is a perfect complex, right? As I Baptist, can I, inter can I interrupt before you state it? Yes, sure. How in the world did you find this? Um, did, did you have, was, so, was the starting so idea to look over the sphere spectrum and then just try to calculate and see what, so, what the outcome so, was? So I will, I will try to answer your question. So first I tried, uh, remember we were really upset by this correction factor. First, I, I thought it was coming from some missing part at infinity that we couldn't understand with the current technology. Then I try to, um, to define something with, which would play the role as derived the Ram cohomology relative with F1. But I think something like this exists, but it does not give what we want at all. For example, yeah. Uh, so this was a, the bigger obstruction because I thought, okay, over F1, this, there is no way this can work. And I don't know, at some point I tried this. Um, and also this idea is in the air, right? Replacing the base ring Z by the sphere spectrum. It's in the air for, the, for a long time. It was not used in this data value context, but it's in the air. Uh, that's, that's all I can say. May I continue? Yeah, very impressive. Okay, so you have this perfect complex here. Uh, which is slightly different than the derived Ram complex. And here you have the very little complex with compact support. You take the determinant just as before. And if you tensor with R, you get exactly the same thing as before because the difference between this guy here and the derived Ram complex is something that has finite cohomology groups, right? So it, when you tensor it with R, you get zero. So you get exactly the same map here, but the determinant of that map will be different because you have a different integral structure here. And so the conjecture is the following. For any x regular proper over spec z and any integer z, we have this equality. Right, that's a conjecture. I'm not saying that I can prove that. I mean, that would be insane. But it looks reasonable. And uh, so. In other words, the determinant of this new fundamental line is, should be equal up to sign to the, the special value on the nose. At least we hope this. Okay, so now let's look at the previous example um, and see what, what's going on. So here we compute uh, the determinant of this new fundamental line over, over S. And we get uh, exactly the same blue number, which is uh, just given by the Veleta complex, which is the same as before. And, um, and the red number now is a bit different. So, so we have this guy here, the, the discriminant, the power of the discriminant, the absolute value of the discriminant, but we also have this factorial term. And the red number is given by this, uh, additive complex. 
So here I cheat a little bit because the red number is not defined individually. And no, I mean, and, and the same thing for the blue number, they are not defined uh, individually, only their product makes sense. But still you can recognize, um, uh, yeah, you can divide the number this way in red and blue. Okay, so now for any abelian number field, um, X is PEC OF um, and any integer N, um, we have this. So this is a result. I mean, that's this you can prove using result of many people on the block Cato conjecture. Um, and this work on Veiletal stuff that we did with Matthias Flach. So at least in that case, it's a, it's a theorem. We do have uh, the, the equality up to sign. I don't see what is written. Okay, so this is, so now we can wonder uh, if there is any connection between this special value conjecture and the functional equation, and there should be some connection. So uh, let X be a proper and regular uh, connected of dimension D and let N be any integer. So uh, the special value conjecture makes a prediction uh, for this number here on the nominator and the prediction for this number here on the denominator It is supposed to be given by this Z line. So here you have the fundamental line, the fundamental line over S. Um, for the Tate twist N, right? So this is supposed to give this number here, zeta star of X N. And here you have the dual of the fundamental line for the Tate twist D minus N. Uh, you take the dual because here you want the inverse of this number. And you have a trivialization of this uh, Xi line, I will call it the Xi line, uh, which is just the product of the two trivializations, right? It's kind of clear that you have a trivialization of this, of the first line, you have a trivialization of the second line. So you take the product of the trivialization and you get a trivialization of the full line, of the full Xi line. And the fact is um, this C line, which looks a bit complicated because it involves that, those valetal cohomology groups, the global valetal cohomology groups with compact support, it can be simplified. And this is this proposition. Uh, so this C line um, is given by this guy here. So here you don't have the global valetal cohomology, but you you have the valid, what is called what we call the valetal cohomology of the Archimedean fiber. So x infinity is like the reduction of x uh, at the infinite prime, somehow, and there is a valetal complex associated to this, which I will define if I have time later. Um, so you have this line, and yeah, and here you have the dual line for the Tate twist d minus n. And there is a canonical trivialization of, the, of this C line, which is given by duality for the link homology. And this is not very difficult to see. Uh, the proof uses this exact triangle. So here you have very little cohomology of X bar, where X bar is like some, something like a Arakelov compactification of X, or more precisely, artin verdier compactification. And it maps to the cohomology, uh, very little cohomology of the Archimedean fiber. And the, 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 the fiber or the, the, the kernel of that map, so to speak, is the very little cohomology with compact support. But now this guy here in the middle satisfies duality. This one. Uh, this is what we call very little duality. So, yeah. Somehow the contribution of this guy for the Tate twist N and the Tate twist D minus N can sell each other. So you, you are left with this guy here. And this is uh, what this proposition is saying. Okay, so in summary, uh, the special value conjecture implies that this um, determinant of this C line, which is unconditionally defined. Uh, so it is supposed to be given by this 
determinant of this fundamental line at n, fundamental line at d minus n. And it should give uh, this uh, zeta star of xn over zeta star of x d minus n, at least if the special value conjecture is true. So here, I just repeat what I said. We have the xi line, which is given by this uh, fundamental line here, and the same fundamental line, uh, at least it's dual for the theta with d minus n. And, uh, and the trivialization is induced by duality for the link homology. Right, so this is what the special value conjecture should imply. Yeah, so here I mentioned that uh, this very little homology of the Archimedean fiber, if you tensor it with R, you just get this. And this is why this determinant here tensor this guy is the same thing as the determinant of the, of the link homology with real coefficients. This is where uh, the link homology appears. Okay, so, so I should say now a few words about the functional equation. So um, I don't know, it's a conjecture and I'm not sure. I think it, it is due to block Cato, but probably Christopher Denninger would know this much better than, than I do. Maybe uh, Sarah knew that already. I mean, I, I don't know uh, um, yeah, who conjectured this first, but uh, it's a conjecture. So let X be a regular connected scheme of dimension D proper and flat over spec Z. Then uh, the zeta function is supposed to have a meromorphic continuation to the entire complex plane. And we expect that we have such a functional equation, which is perfectly symmetric uh, between S here and D minus S here. So here we look at the zeta function of X bar. And the zeta function of X bar is defined as this product of all the Archimedean Euler factor for all the primes of Q, including the Archimedean prime. So it is equal to the classical zeta function times the, what we call the Archimedean Euler factor here. So this Archimedean Euler factor, zeta of x infinity s, uh, is a product of gamma factors, a bit tricky to define, uh, and it depends on the R structure over R on beta cohomology. And now this number, a of x, is what is called the, the block conductor. It's a, it's a positive rational number. So let me say a few words about the block conductor. Uh, so the same assumption, x is a regular connected of dimension d, proper and flat over spec z. Uh, so, so yeah, so as I said, it's a positive rational number. And one way to understand this number is the following. So you have this pairing, which is not immediate to define actually, but you have such a pairing. Here you have derived the Ram cohomology. Now the usual the derived the Ram cohomology relative to Z. You truncate uh, by the D step of the Hodge filtration. And you have uh, a self pairing to Z in degree 2D minus two. So now to understand this pairing, you can tensor it with Q, with the rationals. And here what you get is the, just the, the full, the Ram cohomology of the generic fiber of X, right? Same thing here. Here you get Q in degree uh, 2D minus two, where, uh, yeah, where the generic fiber is of dimension D minus one. So what you have here is just duality for uh, the Ram cohomology. So Poincaré duality for the Ram cohomology, which is a perfect pairing rationally, right? But integrally, it is not perfect. It has a discriminant and this discriminant is precisely uh, at least its absolute value is uh, the block conductor uh, power D. So this is not actually the definition, but it's a, it's a theorem, but uh, I think it's very intuitive. 
For example, if X is spec OF, so always our uh, favorite example, F is a number field, OF is a number ring, look at spec OF. So the pairing here is just the usual trace pairing. Take OF tensor OF over Z, go to Z. By this formula, A tensor B goes to the trace of A times B. And, and so, uh, so the discriminant of this pairing is just, the, of course, the discriminant of the number field. And this tells you that the block conductor is just the absolute value of the usual discriminant in that case. So now the Archimedean, I should say a few words. Sorry, it's a bit technical, I hope it's not too unclear. Uh, I should say a few words about the Archimedean Euler factor. Um, so it has a motivic decomposition, um, right? Um, so here we have the motivic L function on H i x q, uh, where H i of x q, so here the notation means the motive, the pure motive, but in that case, it's just the pure R structure over R on Betti cohomology in degree i. And how it is defined? Well, it is, it is defined by this product, which is a bit complicated, just made by hand so far. Um, so here you have the Hodge numbers appearing. You have the gamma C, the gamma function of the complex prime, which I will define in a minute. Uh, you have this shift here, S minus P. Uh, the product is indexed over all P and Q such that P is strictly lower than, than Q. And in case that uh, I is even, you have some real gamma factor appearing, product of real gamma factor. It is defined this way. So HP plus is the dimension of the, so you can look at HPP and the complex conjugation acts on this space. And so it has a plus eigenspace and a minus eigenspace. And the dimension is this number and this number. So the gamma factor at R is given by this. Don't ask me why, just the, the way it is. And the complex factor, is given by this. So uh, yeah, so, so far this is just made by hand to me. And I should mention that Christopher Denninger has a beautiful explanation for this. You should look at his paper on this. Uh, and again, our favorite example, uh, if X is spec OF, um, then the gamma factor for x infinity is just given like this. I mean, just the way you could imagine. Uh, it's the gamma factor at r time, I mean, to the r1, which is the number of real places, and gamma c to the r2, which is the number of complex places. So something important is to look at the special value of the gamma function, the classical gamma function. Uh, so for n greater or equal than 1, you get n minus 1 factorial. Uh, and for n lower or equal than zero. So in that case, you have a simple pole of the, at the, for the gamma function. And the special value is minus one to the n over minus n factorial. So you can see that, I mean, this is where the factorials are coming from, from the gamma function. So the remark is that uh, the functional equation implies that this number here, right, which is a, uh, a pro an alternate product of special values of zeta function at n and at d minus n, it is supposed to be equal, if the functional equation is true, to the special value of the Archimedean Euler factor at d minus n, the opposite of, sorry, the inverse of the uh, special value of the Archimedean Euler factor at n times this power of the block conductor, okay? So this is what should imply the functional equation if it is true. And the special value conjecture implies this, that uh, the same number is equal to the determinant of the C line. Remember the C line, right? Which has four terms and the canonical trivialization given by uh, duality for the link homology. So of course we, I mean, we want to show that the number on the right here is equal to this one. 
Otherwise, something is wrong somewhere. And this is actually true. Uh, so that's a theorem for any X regular connected of dimension D proper and flat over spec Z, then we do have uh, this equality, right? So namely the determinant of the C line is given by uh, this product of special values of uh, the Archimedean Euler factor at D minus N and at N and the right power of the block conductor. And yeah, it takes some time to prove this, but this is true. This, okay. Uh, this L function is... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This uh, X infinity. X infinity, yeah. And then this uh, uh, Zeta star, is this, is, this can, is this a product of the ordinary Zeta function and some other uh, factor? Well, what, what is, what was the definition of this? Uh, this, of this number in the number so, yes. so i try to explain the i try to write down the definition of the zeta x infinity at s remember well this was a product of, of the ordinary yeah star. yeah yeah this guy here and it's a product of a product etc etc yes. right so this is a uh, this is a meromorphic function and and you do the same thing uh, you look at uh, the Taylor development at d minus n here, yes. and you lo you look at the leading Taylor coefficients. This is okay. the definition. Can That's you go a back one, one page to the previous page? Sure. Yes, here is z to x infinity. Yeah, which, what is it, l infinity, uh, h i, which? Uh... So l infinity, so this function, so you know that uh, x, I mean, philosophically, at least x, x q, it is proper and uh, and smooth, so it is supposed to have, I mean, suppose, no? it is not known, to have a motivic decomposition. And this motivic composition is reflected by a motivic decomposition of the L of the zeta function as a product of L functions. And here, this is the case, okay? So these are this the, these are the, the, so the, this, this earlier factor is a product of those functions here. And those functions are defined by this product, right? And the gamma C and the gamma R are defined by this product. And while well, the gamma function, it's a classical definition. Okay, so you get a mirror. This yeah. Is not really, no, none of these functions involve the scheme X because the scheme X disappears. Uh, no, 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 no. So the, so, the, so the scheme X, okay, it has, it has, it has a, a, a complex, I mean, a, a space of complex points as was yeah. mentioned by Christopher Denninger before. It's a, it's a space, it's, it's even a, a complex manifold. On this manifold, you have the complex conjugation acting, yeah. right? And you can look at Betty cohomology. So singular cohomology of that complex manifold. Uh, it also gets an action of the, the complex conjugation and now by classical Hodge theory, you have a real Hodge structure over R on those Betty cohomology groups. And to this real Hodge structure over R, you associate this L function, this function L infinity. Yeah. Okay. Is this in any way related to this Hasselweil zeta, this original zeta function, where you view X as some scheme of finite type of integers? Is it just finite? It's it's completely related. It's the factor at it's it's the earlier factor. So the product here, so so zeta of x infinity s is the earlier factor corresponding to the Archimedean prime of q. I see. Okay, just like you have a factor for the reduction of x modulo p. Take the tensor product of x with fp over z. You look at the, the zeta function of that scheme over fp, that's the Euler factor at the prime p. So what I'm considering here is completely analogous to this for the Archimedean prime. Yes. Okay, although we don't have a, a conceptual, I mean, we don't have a conceptual understanding of what is really going on, okay? All right. I, I hope my answer was clear enough. Uh, I don't know where I, what I was saying. Uh, yeah, okay. So we have this theorem. 
Um, okay, and I should also make this remark. So if X lies over a finite field, uh, so the block conductor here is not defined, but there is this uh, replacement here. It's this product of Q, where Q is the cardinality of the finite field, to the minus uh, the classical Eladic Euler characteristic of the variety over FQ bar, okay? If you do that, you still have the functional equation. It's actually a theorem in that case. And, and the previous theorem is true also. So you don't have to, I mean, the flat, the flat net hypothesis is not necessary. Okay, uh, I don't know what this corollary. So suppose that X has pure dimension D and that, oh yeah, yeah. And that uh, zeta of X bar S satisfies the functional equation. Then the special value conjecture at S equal N is equal equivalent uh, to the special value conjecture at S equals D minus N. And this was the original motivation, of course, but what is uh, kind of nice is that, I mean, the, this, I mean, this is true uh, because of some results that, that can be proven unconditional. Okay, so maybe I explain how the very little complex, I don't know if I have enough time, should I, yeah. Uh, four minutes, I, I believe. So very little cohomology of the Archimedean fiber. Uh, so X infinity in that case uh, is just the set of complex points, right? With the complex topology where you mod out by the action of the Galois group over R. And you have a canonical morphism of topoi. So here, the, this is the complex of equivalent sheaves on X infinity, which are so equivalent for the action of the complex conjugation. And here, this is just the, the category of sheaves of sets on X infinity of this weird space, X infinity, topological space. And for any N greater or equal than zero, you can look at two I pi to the NZ. This is a GR equivalent sheaf on X of C. So you can apply R pi lower star, you get a complex of sheaves here, but you need to truncate it in degree lower or equal to n. And this is our very little complex. And so this may seem strange, but something similar is appearing, if I remember correctly, in Santomi homology. You have to truncate. Uh, OK, so maybe you want to observe that uh, so this guy is a complex of sheaves on X infinity. So it has cohomology sheaves. And uh, in degrees strictly positive, uh, those cohomology sheaves are these ones, right? And they are supported on the closed subspace X of R, which is a closed subspace of X infinity uh, with talks um, this guy here, which is either Z mod two or zero. And for N, negative, we have this definition. Um, you just do the same thing where you consider the affine n space over x. Sorry, the affine minus n space over n over x. And then you just use the um, f lower shrink functor and you shift by minus two. And this is what you would expect. So there is also like a uniform definition for any n that works, but it's I mean, it's more technical, uh, more tricky to, to define briefly. So in any case, what you get a complex of sheaves on X infinity, complex of abelian sheaves, and you take the hyper cohomology. And this is your very lethal cohomology uh, for the Archimedean prime. Okay, so the upshot of this, so you can see that you have in this very lethal complex here, you have some two i pi appearing. You have some, some complex of two torsion appearing too. And the upshot of this work is that this number here, which is zeta star of x infinity at d minus n, zeta star of x infinity at n minus one, and this power of the block conductor. Um, so it's a product of a power of two the power of two pi, uh, many factorials, 
and the power of the block conductor, this one, right? And roughly speaking, uh, the powers of two and two pi come from the very little cohomology of the Archimedean fiber for the Tate twist n and d minus n. And the rest, namely the factorials and the power of the block conductor come from um, this weird uh, derived the RAM complex modulo the Hodge filtration at n and d minus n relative to the sphere spectrum. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Uh, do, we, do you have any questions? Uh, yes, I have a couple of questions. So, um, first of all, um, so you, so you, you, now that there are some conjectures, uh, considering the uh, specs of values at the uh, integer value. So, uh, do you have conjectures about, uh, the values of zeta functions at, uh, no integer. No. No. Okay. But there is some. The only work I know in this direction is due to Niranjan Ramachandran, who is doing something like this over finite fields, in some cases. So the big problem is that you don't have motivic complexes, and you don't expect to have motivic complexes. But in some cases, so what you want, for example, to at s equal one over one over two, what you need is something like a square root, roughly speaking, a square root of the of the Tate motif d of one. And this is certainly not, I mean, at least with z coefficients, I don't think there is something like that in nature. With with yeah. Okay. No, I, I don't think we can expect something like this. So we okay. do we do expect something like this for, for the vanishing order conjecture uh, at any complex number, but not for the special value conjecture. Okay, thank you. Um, so my second question is that uh, it seems that uh, for for the Bexo values. Uh, Conjectures, you use another kind of county theory than what that possible uh, and reason by like um, Leninger to to solve the to, to yeah to solve the to, to find the yeah, to solve the Riemann hypothesis possible so. Is there any explanation or do you think maybe there, there will be some you know, oh, filter? Sorry. Maybe there's some some good county theory that can uh, allow us to do both the things or there may be some like uh, some competing uh, uh, things that uh, prevent to have such a, such a county theory. So Anna, I'm sorry, I'm not sure to understand the question. Yeah, so my question is that um, for the specs of values uh, conjectures, so you use, uh, you use possible hot to uh, compute theory. I use, and I use, sorry, I use what? Use a different computing theory than what uh, what is the end reason by possible Lenga to, to solve the Riemann hypothesis? So, I mean, the two, two commutative theories seem to be different. I, because, I, I, okay. Yeah, so, okay. so mean, one, one thing is that uh, to so, solve Riemann hypothesis, it seems that we need uh, infinite dimensional. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, 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 okay. So, yeah, so my question is uh, Is there I some connection? It, uh, it could be possible that. There will be some complete theory that allows us to do both, or, yeah, or yeah. maybe that's the impossible. Once, so, so Christopher yeah. Christopher Denninger has this uh, fantastic picture where you have this cohomology theory, where you can write the zeta function itself in terms of uh, some operator acting on some infinite infinite uh, dimensional spaces, complex. Yeah, spaces. right. Yeah. Yeah. 
And, um, and of course, if you want, I mean, if you want to prove the special value conjecture, probably you have to prove this first. Oh, you mean you, you have to so so the, so, this so, first? So I didn't mention this, but there is something else. So, so these two complexes of, uh, I mentioned this additive complex and this multiplicative complex, uh, they are part of something that we call veil arakelov cohomology. And there is, the, there is such a cohomology with uh, complex integer, integral and, z, and real coefficients. And this, we expect that this uh, veil arakelov cohomology uh, is just given by the homotopy invariant of the operator acting on uh, Denninger's cohomology. I have written okay. I have written a paper on this recently. Yeah, I see. Okay, thanks. Yeah, but yeah, that's a good question. That, that we expect such a connection. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any other question? I thought it was a it was a great talk and a great great insights. Thank that's you very much, Christopher. Yeah, I I have just a stupid question. I mean this. N minus one factorial, these factorials, yeah? Yeah. On, on the, of course, we get them from the gamma factors on the infinity side. How yes. do they appear? Do they appear as orders of permutations groups or how, in, if you, if you, oh, yeah. the absolute base point? No, it's a, so, ah, sorry, uh, how to explain that? So, so you have this, um, I mean, the, the idea, when you look at the THH, so the topological Hochschild homology of Z, you get uh, Z in degree zero and Z mod J or Z mod N in degree uh, two N minus one, if I remember correctly. Okay, and now if you look at um, the circle action on this thing and you look at the uh, homotopy Co-invariant for this, there is a spectral sequence, right? And and so the spectral sequence gives you a filtration on the abutment, and so you have the graded pieces of the filtration, and you can just read there that you have n n minus one, n minus two, etc. to the one. That's just that this just looks like a miracle to me, and also and also. Uh, at, at first, when we had this uh, very little, sorry, this derived the RAM complex relatively to Z, um, I even uh, suggest to a student to and try to understand this complex over finite fields, for example. So it, I don't know, we were just lucky that it gives the right Euler, uh, the Euler characteristic because the complex itself it's a, it's a it's a mess. I mean, it's impossible to understand it. It's it's just, I mean, it's a mess. And when you do that, you get a complex which has exactly the same Euler characteristic, but it which is perfectly, which is very nice. Uh, uh, yeah, which is much better behaved. I, I I mean, I still don't understand why we have to go to the sphere spectrum, but apparently we do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Any other question? So uh, if no other question, let's thank the speaker again uh, here. Thank you very much. Okay, great.